Hey everybody, and today I wanted to help answer a popular question, and that question usually goes like this. Now, as someone buying their first arcade stick, what is a good arcade stick for beginners? And there are a variety of factors to consider, but to summarize an answer, there should be a balance of value between the build quality, the features, and the price. So this video is largely going to be an overview of the stick I've been recommending over this past year. And that's the Soul Calibur 6 edition of the Hori Real Arcade Pro N, and the N standing for the Noir layout of the stick and buttons. Now I did want to briefly look at the Xbox One version to start. It's more or less the same as the PS4 version except for the artwork and the red coloring. Now you can even tell that the casing shares the same mold as the PS4 version because this Xbox One version, you see there's a little outline here. This is where the PS4 touchpad would go on the other one. Now I just got this one off Amazon on sale just because I love the PS4 version of this stick so much. And I've been enjoying using it on Killer Instinct and I also have Dead or Alive on the Xbox One. But for this overview, I'm going to mainly focus on the PS4 version. So to start off with, the big reason I find myself recommending this is the price. It has an MSRP of $189, but on Amazon lately, this stick will average around $130 down to as low as like $95 or $100. And that's mostly because of the Soul Calibur branding. There's a standard Real Arcade Pro N or Wrap N with black and gold that actually has a cheaper MSRP, but the sale price is often much lower on the Soul Calibur. Now, I love Soul Calibur as a series, but I haven't heavily played it since Soul Calibur 2. But that won't stop me from using this on Street Fighter or any other fighting game. And the art is visually impressive in person anyway. So don't assume that the stick is cheap because it isn't good. It's just that many players are picky about the branding depending on the, the game they play. So sticks like this can become a really good value. Now this stick is around six and a half pounds and the casing is a hard translucent plastic with the metallic plating on the bottom. You do have some rubber feet on the bottom to keep it in place on the table. You have the headphone jack up front, and then you also have the PS4 touchpad on the backside, which is good since many PS4 fighters use the touchpad for training mode features. Now the starter options button on the stick is actually at the top right, and they have this little plastic door here to protect it. So you're not going to really have any kind of accidental button presses with this one. Now, there are material differences with the stick buttons and the layout used compared to the average fight stick you'll come across. So for the stick and buttons, as opposed to Sanwa, uh, Hori has included their own Hori Hayabusa brand. Now the stick, that's very similar to the Sanwa JLF. Now, there are minor differences to the throw and engage. And that's just basically, you know, how far it travels and how long it takes to recognize an input, you know, like a move to get out of a dead zone. But uh, there's nothing crazy really different between that and the JLF. Now, it does feel like the high booster returns to neutral a little bit faster, you know, so I tend to have an easier time on this with dashing. Now, I did want to comment on two criticisms I, I've seen. Uh, one of them is the wobbling, which is just the amount of, uh, I don't know if it's a technical term really, but just the amount of bouncing back and forth the stick can make when you hold a direction to let it go. That's kind of based on the spring inside and the weight. Now, the Hayabusa, you see a little uh, bouncing there, it does have slightly more wobble than the Sanwa, but the bounce doesn't go far enough to exit neutral and leave the dead zone to hit another direction. Now, this stick also has a weird trait where if you push it all the way one direction, you can kind of keep going, and it lifts upward a little bit. You can kind of hear a dull thud when I do it too. It's very slight. I'm not sure what causes that in this build, and I actually remember some Mitsu sticks doing this too to a degree, but it doesn't impact anything. And I just wanted to point those things out because I often see people point out these smaller differences when neither of these really make a material impact during gameplay. Now to help a bit with comparisons with the Sanwa buttons and then the Vulix and Noir layouts, I did bring out my Razor Panthera, which has all Sanwa parts and it has the Vulix layout. Now back to the Soul Calibur stick, uh, 
this one does have the Hayabusa buttons, and there are some differences. Uh, the buttons themselves are slightly more shallow than the San was, but it's kind of hard to see that difference on camera. But it does allow for quicker activation, and they're matte as opposed to the glossy finish. Um, but the main thing I wanted to compare is I do think there is a bit of a difference with the loudness of the buttons. Um, this little caliber stick is probably the loudest one I have. And it may be a little bit tricky to hear on camera, but I wanted to demonstrate nonetheless, so. Okay. And for the Hori. So... It might be a combination of both the uh, the housing it's in, aka you know the plastic casing, and then the housing of the buttons themselves inside of the plungers. But um, overall, I definitely wouldn't think of the uh, the Hori uh, wrap in has a quiet stick. Um, the buttons are definitely pretty loud, so that might be make an impact on somebody's purchase if they have a preference. Now, another unique aspect we mentioned a little bit earlier on this flight stick is the Noir layout, and compared to the Vulix. The Noir is going to have extra space between the stick and buttons, uh, right around an extra inch between the stick and the center point of the furthest out button. So if we just use a little straight edge here using the manual, you can see that extra space right there, though. And that's great, you know, for larger hands in particular, as a Vulix in some cases can seem a bit more cramped. Now, closer look at the Vulix layout. Uh, pay attention to that this left button is a little bit off to the side and that these three are straight across. With the Hori, you can see that this one's a little bit more straight up and down, but the bigger difference is that this is not straight up and across. This goes downward, and it's a bit more ergonomic because your pinky is going to be shorter, so it falls instead of having to reach up a bit more and kind of curve your hand like that, you can kind of just more naturally let it fall, and it'll be... Uh, under your pinky so it doesn't have to stretch at all. Now, there will probably be fans of each layout, really depending on the game that you're playing, but the main thing is that you can get used to either of these. Now, of course, if you want to switch the stick and buttons to Sanwa or anything else for that matter, the bottom plate takes a Phillips screwdriver, and to change out the top artwork, uh, the Hori also needs an Allen wrench. Now, side note, I wouldn't let easy access to the inside of a stick, you know, be a major purchasing point. Like, you know, the Panther, it has a clamshell design. Um, reason being is that outside of any initial changes you're going to make, odds are you're rarely going to need access to the inside. And there are some downsides to having that clamshell since, you know, this is very hard while there's a decent amount of flex that's in the Panther and, you know, the Mad Cat CE2 for that matter. So don't let the need for having to use a tool and taking 10 minutes to open something be a big roadblock for you. Anyway, if I had to summarize this video, if you can get the Hori Real Arcade Pro and really either one at under $150, you're getting a solid product. Now, as of November 10th, 2019, the PS4 version is currently on Amazon for about $106. Now, I originally bought it, you know, um, about a year ago for 95 and I bought the Xbox version just last week for about 85 so the pricing is definitely all over the place. I would just keep it in your wish list. I've seen it also pretty cheap at other retailers, such as the PS4 one I know is pretty cheap on GameStop's website as well right now. Now, just as general advice, whatever you choose to do, uh, don't over-focus on the smaller details of a stick if you're just getting started. Don't worry about immediately needing to buy octo gates or new springs or actuators, looking to change the buttons right off the bat, etc. Just buy the arcade stick, play some games, practice, and enjoy your new purchase. Now, as always, leave your questions and thoughts in the comments, and I'll catch you all next time. Take care.